Good morning everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Alpha Sapphire. In the last part, we got the experience share. In this part, oh, what's that Pokemon? Search level 2, so it's one we've seen before. If you take bug Pokemon to school, you'll get instantly popular. Unfortunately, this is going to scare away that Pokemon that we did have on the deck tab, And we instead get to fight James, who has Ninkata. I like this Pokemon, I never get a chance to use it. And it's because, like, you've already heard, I've got Shroomish and I've got Treacle, and I've got Poochyena. I don't need another bug. Like, I don't need a bug type. One hit from water, this guy is a bug steal, so uh, Water Gun will be basically an instant kill. And down goes Bugcatcher James. He can't be popular if he loses. So, let's get this item. A nice Ether, Ether, whichever one it winds up being as well as nothing. Alright, so we can't go this way because of prickly thorns, but a Pokemon may be able to cut the tree. This is where the difficulty for this run is going to come in, based on those types of moves, the ones that are um, path blocking, like that one there needs cut. But first things first, this is the Petalburg Recon team checking in. Afraid I have to be with an apology, Mr. Matt. It's not good news. Vision's a no-go. A little something cropped up and got in the way. Dodge that. Got it. Will do. I'll continue investigating that energy we detected. Ooh. That kid sure has some problems as a trainer. Thank you. I mean, you can't really tell that. We have a lot of promise in training a single Pokemon. Um, but yeah, so those moves were one thing I had to make sure of while I was uh, figuring out what I'm doing for this one. Because I wanted to know if it was even plausible. Normally, um, you could pick whatever starter you want as long as you catch a Zigzagoon. Zigzagoon is a great HM slave because between it and its second form, I think it gets five or six of the uh, HMs that you need to use. So it makes it basically that Pokemon is meant for pickup as well as um, the HMs that you're given it. Um, there are a few hidden items back behind this place. Uh, they tend to be shown off with the empty gaps. So there, we got a Pokeball, a Potion, and I think there might be one more. But first, we'll get this X attack. I don't think it's right beside me. It isn't. So let's check this area here. No? Later, you'll get an item that makes that a little easier to find, and I don't think it's anything too, too important that you can get there. But, um, in any case, we don't actually need the experience from these. It's level 7. Level 7's worth it. Alright, we'll water gun you. Uh, level 7's still going to give us decent experience, even though um, it's not really too helpful because it is a wild Pokemon. If it's a trainer's Pokemon, they tend to be much more helpful. And I was having to worry about that. Uh, sand attacks are a little powerful. A little too troublesome usually. But we can now safely get out of this grass. And at our way, Respiro is right at the end of this path. Trainer Chips. There are pairs of trainers who challenge others to two on two Pokemon called Double Battles. However, uh, and it's I guess a side effect of that, because we only have Mudkip, we cannot do any Double Battles. We're challenged by the Lady Cindy who is basically, it's Winston, um, but on the other side of the forest. They both use the same strategy, though um, Cynthia has uh, a slightly stronger zigzag going here. Growl's going to weaken our attack, not anything we have to worry about, but yeah, it's double. If your only moves are physical, oh, we actually get to see the fun thing here. If your only moves are physical, the fact that they do growl you first uh, is a bad sign, because um, by growling you first. Yeah, here's your full restore. Uh, it's hugely expensive. You could probably, with a super potion, cover the same amount of health. Sorry, sorry, this is caught on my leg. Um, recover the same amount of health, and it would be the same effect. But, um, because they growl you, any physical attacks are going to be weaker. At this point, they've growled twice, I think. So I'd be only doing about half what I would normally do damage wise. And then Tail Whip, so that lowers my defense. All in all, they have a really good one for stall tactics. If you do wind up fighting something and you know 
uh, you're going to take a few hits before you die. You could use that strategy. You could tail whip to weaken it, tail whip to weaken it, and then all your attacks are going to be twice as strong. However, it's a better strategy when you have a second Pokemon in reserve, because then you can just let your Pokemon take most of the hits, heal them up, and then once the enemy is weakened enough, you just either continue weakening or start your assault with that Pokemon. If that one goes down, you just swap to your next one and the guy is still weakened. It's not like Sword Stance where it only affects you, uh, it only affects the opponent's one Pokemon. Uh, so, Sword Stance is useful if you've got one person sweeping the um, other side, whereas um, Growl is useful the other way around. If you've got um, your um, team having to fight the one Pokemon. Alright, the accuracy fell. I'm liking this accuracy fell. Um, because you saw, none of my moves are doing too much damage. Low Tad is an annoyance at this point. It is a um, grass water type. So my water moves are not going to do much damage. So that's why I'm throwing mud slaps. Lowering his accuracy at the same time as doing some damage. So his moves are going to have a harder time hitting me. And likewise, because he's a water type, uh, he doesn't necessarily have very many good moves against me. That did a lot more damage than I expected for a tackle. But, look it goes down. This one, this is where the uh, trouble begins. Because we got growled a lot there. Um, and this is a Shroomish. So, uh, we want to be very careful. I mean, not much we can do about it at this point, but this Shroomish does have, I believe, at least Absorb. Yeah, there it is. And that's going to hit hard. It's going to take a lot of our health, though. So I'm going to actually spam Mud Slaps and hope to lower Shroomish's accuracy enough that it can't hit us with Absorb. Because every time it absorbs us, it's basically going to heal off two or three of our turns and damage to it. Unfortunately, that move I didn't want to see. I did not want to see Leech Seed. Alright, now we have to go full force and attack it as much as possible because it's going to be healing. Whether or not um, it's attacking us with um, Absorb. So, not good for us because look, it heals off of us. And because it heals a, a set amount, it's going to take four from us and heal Shroomish each time. So we're going to want to just Water Gun repeatedly. Uh, next turn we have to heal. Fortunately our Water Gun is out damaging. Oh, that would have been bad. He's going to heal a lot this turn, but I need to heal myself. Because we have a single point of HP. Um, to the point of this is why I went into that upper area and picked up the Super Potion. Because I knew there was going to be, at some point, a Grass-type Pokemon that we're fighting without anything else. That's why I'm really happy that our next Pokemon is going to be built to cancel Grass-types somewhat. I say somewhat not the best way, but um, it's going to do enough that hopefully we kill it off. Let's go back to our Water Gun and hopefully take out this Shroomish. It's a shame that, because we're fighting this, we don't get extra experience. Like, there is an experience bonus for taking out something you're weak to. I wish there was, because really, Mudkip, two times weak to Shroomish in general. I should get more experience for taking out this Shroomish. This is also where the bulk of the video is going to be, unfortunately, because it does heal a lot, and this is one of the reasons I like the Grass type. I like Shroomish, is because between Absorb and, um, what's it called, Leech Speed, you're healing up to like a quarter of your health each turn, or maybe more depending on the level difference between you and the enemy. Um, but there's no guarantee. If I hadn't done my mud slaps against this guy, I think we'd already be dead. Because you see, every time he goes to tackle, he's basically missing. That's giving me an extra turn. I think I can take one more turn and I'm going to have to heal up again. Which isn't good because every time I heal up Shroomish, it's a lot of HP back. Yeah, tackled me, leaf seeded me, I'm down to 5 HP. Uh, I, I can't trust that 
as much as I'd love to, I can't trust that my attack's going to kill. So we need to potion. We need to potion my kill. Uh, this hopefully will not be an issue once we get our second Pokemon, because we'll be able to swap out, we'll be able to, because I know our attack has been nerfed a lot right now, thanks to um, the growls that first one set up. Also, it looks like I would have been safe going after it the other way. And because of the Growl Zigzagoon's setup, um, I didn't have the ability to kill him. Uh, my tackle would have been enough to take this guy out by this point. However, Shroomish's ability is also annoying. Um, it can have uh, effect spore, and if you physically attack it, you have a chance of getting paralyzed, burned, uh, poisoned, or put to sleep. I think those are the four that you can get. So if we hit him and it puts us to sleep, we're dead. Absorb would basically kill us, guaranteed. Are you kidding me? You got another Absorb off? Alright, I'm gonna do my Water Gun at this point. I don't want to waste another potion here. So we either kill him this turn, or we die. Um, that's all I can say. I hope we do enough damage this. And we did. Okay. Oh, and we got a crit! After that, like, three minute mat long match. Yeah, 100 experience for that. I really feel I should have got more experience out of that. Um, but we no need to run back to heal. Here's the double battle. If we talk to them, you need to battle us, you need to bring two Pokemon. We're tough after all. This guy was always where I healed with um, with uh, Trico, because I believe he only has magic herbs. Pick up the Cherry Berry. And this nice lady oh, seems to have been watering the Aran berries, because they got us four this time. So we picked up some more Aran berries, and let's go heal up, and I think we can actually just go straight to the gem at this point. Um, oh, there's the center. Hello, May. How are you doing? Made it to Rust Bro 2. Big here. Little root can't compare. There's the gem. They're not going to restrict it to five badges, but... Now, once I catch more Pokémon, I'm going to uh, challenge it with my team. Uh, a few useful items in this town. Um, one that I always make sure to grab. Uh, not going to be too helpful, this one. This guy. So, common uses where your Pokémon... You knock out Pokémon too quick. Really helpful for hunting um, shiny Pokémon being able to hit them as with a level 100 and guarantee they're not going to die, infinitely useful. So I always make sure to grab that, as well as this thing right here. Determined inspection, that limber way you move for well-trained Pokemon, you're obviously a skilled trainer. Skilled with our zero, H uh, our zero badges, I wish they would have made this guy uh, uh, require uh, the gym to be able to get the HM, so that would make more sense. We just came off of a gym battle, of course we look limber, of course we look all that sort of stuff. But right now, we just came, we've got a 3 health mudkip, and that's it on our team. So, it's it's not as believable now. Um, but, as was mentioned, there is the gym right up here. Nice ace trainer hiding next to the gym. Once you get a shiny bat, gym badge in your hand, you really start to feel like a trainer. Now, there's the gym leader right here. Hello! I'm Roxanne, the Rustboro City Pokemon Gym Leader. I became a gym leader so I may apply all that I've learned in battle at Pokemon Training School. I'll present you with a gym badge as proof of your strength as trainer. Please take up the challenge. I look forward to seeing you as a challenger. Till then, farewell. And there we go. We have to get to her who is now at the very back of the room. Uh, we're up against a gym trainer. Don't take them lightly, they train up in this gym as well. Unfortunately, that means they have the same weakness as this gym. We're up against you, dude. However, I'm really happy to take out these gym trainers because they're all going to be rock type. Uh, because that's what this gym is. Unfortunately, a lot of them have sturdy as well. Uh, it's a bit unfortunate. However, uh, Water Gun will one hit, well, one or two hit if it got sturdy. Pokemon. 
and they give a decent, like, that shroomish that we saw, nine, uh, 100 experience. This thing we just took out, 80 experience. Oh, sorry, 90 experience. It makes it a much better place to train up, and not all of the Geodudes will have sturdy. Uh, there are a few different uh, abilities that they could have, so I'm not too worried. I think the other one's Rockhead uh, for an ability. However, yeah, he goes down. Next! If you can't beat me, you won't stand a chance against Roxanne. Probable. I mean, if I can't beat you, you have a single Pokémon who's a Geodude, who's level like 10, I guess? I don't know, 10 or 11? 10. Alright, I got it right the first time. If I cannot beat you, I can understand why I would not beat Roxanne. Uh, I think Roxanne has three Pokémon, uh, Geodude being one of those three. Take another hit. Honestly, we're taking more damage in this gym than I expected, but that is because of Sturdy. It's going to guarantee you at least take a hit from these Pokémon. Uh, it makes them much worse because they have Explosion. Well, not these ones, but later game when you run into Grapplers, they will use Explosion and take out your team as a result. All that's left is you. I'll make you feel the power of the number two trainer at this school. All right. Hello, school kid Georgia. Georgia? Eh, I'll just do Georgia, I don't know. Anyways, another Geodude. There's not too many choices for rock types at this point. Uh, you have Geodude, you have um, maybe Onyx. I don't think Onyx even comes into play in this one. And that's about it. The rest of them are way too late to get used. So, uh, because it is a gym, I do want to prep by giving Mudkip an Aranberry and using an Aranberry on Mudkip. We still have 11 of those, I'm not too worried about running out. Let's take out this gym with a nice big fossil on the back wall. Just as I expected, I knew you and your Pokemon would be able to get this far. Now, would you kindly demonstrate how you battle with your Pokemon? Alright, welcome to the first gym, versus Roxanne. You are challenged by leader Roxanne. Go Geodude. So, oh, she only has two. I thought she had three. I don't know why. Um, we're going to Water Gun. This one probably has Sturdy. So we're, we're already expecting to take two hits to kill it. It has Sturdy. But we're only level 14, so we're actually a level or two lower than I was expecting for this gym. I'm not too worried. Like I said, this one can be handled a lot earlier. As long as it doesn't full heal Geodude, dude, yeah, okay, it's dead. Uh, this can be handled a lot earlier than um, the second gym's level. Uh, because you're a Mudkip, your hits are going to be basically a one-hit kill, even if you're level like 6. Because water is that much more powerful against Geodude. Nose Pass, however, it's not as powerful against, uh, but you're still going to do a decent chunk of damage. I think Geodudes are times 4 to damage from water. Yeah, see, it didn't one hit this Nose Pass. That's both between his level being 14 and because he's not taking 4 times weakness. However, I believe this Nose Pass had sturdy as well, so it doesn't really matter that we didn't one hit him. There we go, Roxanne goes down. So, I lost. It seems I have still much more to learn. Indeed, you do. I understand Pokemon League rules state that the trainers receive this if they defeat a gym leader. Please accept the official Pokemon League Stone Badge. So we're rushing pretty quick. I'm surprised at the end of Part 3 we've actually managed to get our first badge. The stone Badge enables the use of Cut outside of battle. However, there's one little issue. That. We don't have anyone who can use Cut. All Pokemon up to level 20, even those you get in trade, will also obey you. And take this, we got Rock Tome. A nice strong move, however, uh, not going to be useful. It's useful for dropping rocks and lowering target speed. Um, I don't have anyone I need to use this on. As interesting as it would be to try to give it to Mudkip. Um, okay, can't use False Swipe, can't use Cut. But it can use Rock Dome. 
I don't have a weakness to something that Rock Chome would help with. If it was a ground move, I'd love it, but at the moment, I don't need it. So, before we step out of the gym, I'm gonna call it. Thank you guys for watching this part of Pokemon Alpha Sapphire No Catch Run. In the next part, we will... Well, I guess we don't really have a to-do, do, do we? I know they've mentioned Team Aqua's after something in uh, Rustboro, but we haven't seen them. We did go straight to the gym, though, so it's understandable why we didn't. In any case, we'll find out what Team Aqua is after next time. See you guys then.